I can't. We're calling to let you know you've been selected. Okay, so let me back this up and give you guys some context for all of this excitement. A few weeks earlier. The Arts Are Matt over at Google Chicago headquarters DM'd me on Instagram because Google was vetting and hiring an elite super team of local Chicago artists to customize a 10-inch vinyl toy of Google's Android mascot, Bug Droid, which is super cool. But the even cooler part is that all of the Androids are gonna be on display on the 11th floor of their Chicago office building permanently. That's right, folks. My artwork is gonna be displayed by Google forever. And I'm getting paid too. That never hurts, right? So gather around, gang, because we're doing work for Google today on Cat Leapin's Art. So to start things off, Google shipped a box containing a 10-inch vinyl Android toy to my art studio so that I can begin customizing. And once I've finished, I'll bop downtown and hand deliver my work to Matt over at the Google headquarters building. Now the deadline is a few short weeks away, so I need to calm the F down and figure out what I'm gonna do with this little dude. This is the part where we turn to our trusty iPad to work out our idea and our color palette before we go and get our hands dirty. All right, let's do this. Now, one of the nice things about working for Google is that they're kind of a big company. Understatement alert. So they have images of their Google Android toy online. So we're just gonna go ahead and snag a shot of it from a couple of different angles, import it into our Procreate app, and get ready to draw on a layer on top. Now I really want this piece to be unique and stand out from the bunch. So in addition to painting this toy, I'm gonna to be sculpting some 3D elements on the vinyl form for an even bigger transformation. So that means we're gonna to have to grab a couple of tubs of our favorite hardworking epoxy clay, epoxy sculpt. And we're gonna be referring back to our digital sketches, our guide. This is gonna help us as we build the clay on the vinyl base and start constructing all of those googly eyes. Huh, see what I did there? As you might have seen in some of my previous custom toy videos, I like to use epoxy sculpt instead of Sculpey polymer clay, especially when working on a vinyl base that could melt and probably shouldn't be put in an oven. And I like to play it safe, so I'm definitely not gonna give it a whirl on a high profile project like this one. Epoxy clay is a two-part epoxy clay. Now when parts A and B are combined in equal proportions, a chemical reaction occurs that allows the clay to fully cure in around two hours at room temperature. Now that doesn't really give us a lot of time to work, so make sure to only mix the amount of clay that you need at that immediate moment. Otherwise, you'll end up wasting clay because it'll harden before you can even use it. For this sculpt, we're not gonna mix much more than a golf ball size amount of clay at any given time. And then we'll just keep doing this several times over as we work through the entire toy. Per the product safety instructions, we're gonna be wearing gloves and a respirator mask. We're also gonna be using a safety solvent, water, inexpensive brushes, and silicone mats to keep our work surface clean. Now let's get to sculpting.
has all been applied and has hardened, but the packaging says that we should give it some additional time to cure before we go ahead and sand any imperfections and prime. So we're gonna let this guy hang out overnight before we get to sanding tomorrow. If you watch my videos, then you know that I sand a lot of skateboard decks. So I just snagged some of the sandpaper that I already had on hand to smooth and even out these eyeballs to be as close to perfect spheres as I can get them by hand. Now I'm gonna be using a 150 grit sandpaper sheet and you could go finer if you like. Remember that the next step is gonna be priming. So you just wanna make sure that everything is pretty smooth and dust free so that your gesso will stick. Tack cloth. And again, making reference to the epoxy clay safety instructions, please make sure to wear safety glasses, gloves, and a mask when sanding this material. You definitely do not want to breathe in any of its dust or have it on your skin, if at all possible. Now I'm gonna try and do this. All right, now I'm gonna sweat and do this sanding off camera because frankly, you know, how exciting is sanding? And just jump ahead to show you guys the finished sanded product. Next, we're gonna prime the toy bright white. This means we're gonna have a clean blank slate to start painting on. Priming is also gonna help make sure that the previous paint job on the toy isn't gonna show through the new layers of paint that we're gonna be adding. So without further ado, it's prime time! to give my primer plenty of time to dry before layering on any of those bright acrylic paints that I like to use. So we're gonna let this do its thing overnight and come back to paint in the morning. <laughs> the toy is all primed and looking great, but I'm gonna level with you guys. It took a crazy amount of layers to get the coverage that I wanted. Looking back now, I really wish that I would have just spray painted on my primer like I've done on my other toys in the past. I thought I'd be saving myself a step by not needing to brush matte medium on top of the spray paint, but in reality, I ended up spending way more time applying multiple layers of gesso to get full coverage. Oh well, shame on me for trying to take a shortcut. I guess we'll just chalk that one up to being a learning moment. But now that we've completed all that prep, let's get to painting. First, I'm gonna begin by blocking in all the areas of color using our digital sketch as a roadmap. I already defined my color palette in Procreate, so I just have to mix my paint colors to match, if you wish to. You can absolutely think of this as a more sophisticated version of color by numbers. All right, let's do this. is retina burning bright, but he could use a little something extra to, you know, make him pop. I just can't put my finger on exactly what it would be. Hmm. Oh yeah, I know. Let's pull this all together with some crispy black outlines.
is all done. Ta-da! Just kidding, you guys know that I can't leave well enough alone. We're gonna be adding another level of wow factor by coating this guy in a super glossy, professional-looking varnish by using an epoxy resin pour. So sit back, get comfy, and enjoy the ooey, gooey deliciousness. This is not a test. To minimize or prevent adverse effects resulting from the use of epoxy resin, do not eat or drink this product. It may cause allergic reactions and is toxic if swallowed. Seriously, just do everyone a favor and keep the resin out of your pie hole. Disclaimer Donna out. Before we get to mixing our epoxy resin, we have a little bit of prep work to do. We need to amass all of our supplies, silicone mats and stir sticks that make for easy cleanup, inexpensive brushes, mixing cups with measuring marks, and of course, safety gear. Hey you guys, you know with me, it's always safety first. I recommend wearing gloves and using a respirator mask, especially if you're at all allergic to epoxy resin and its fumes. Today we're going to be using Maker Epoxy, a two-part epoxy resin from our friends at Total Boat. Part A is the resin part of the mix and part B is the hardener. So let's measure out that Maker Epoxy using a one-to-one -one ratio and get ready for that oh-so-satisfying epoxy pour. Okay, it's been the recommended five to seven days and our resin has completely cured. When your project doesn't feel tacky or sticky and you're not able to leave any fingerprints, that's when you know you're good to go. So now it's time for us to hop in the Catmobile, jet downtown to the Google building and deliver this toy to Matt. Ooh, I have so many nervous butterflies in my stomach. I mean, this is a big deal. I mean, I think he's gonna like it, but we'll have to see how it goes. All right, we just got here, pulled up to the Google headquarters. So excited to make the drop off. Ah! Okay, now all we have to do is check into the building. Hello, random friendly Google employee. And we'll find Matt for the big reveal and the final handoff. Hey, there's Matt. Ooh, I think he likes it. Matt in London, hi London, show me where all 20 of the androids will be living together in a custom display case happily ever after. And then they were kind enough to give me a quick tour of the 11th floor of the building, which is covered in tons of awesome street art. I bet you can name a lot of those artists if you look hard enough. I mean, whoa, I've never worked in an office that looks this cool, have you? Bonus, when you walk outside, they have a Chicago subway car on the roof of the building. You know, just for fun. Hey, who let this guy drive? What? Ha <laughs> Choo choo! But now it's time to leave our little reimagined bug droid with Matt at Google and say bye bye 
Okay, wow, that was amazing. Matt and everybody at Google were so nice and super welcoming. It was a total blast getting to have a tour of the building and seeing where my Android is gonna be living on permanent display. There were a good number of steps in the process to customize this toy. Sketching and concepting, sculpting, painting, and epoxy coating, but all of the hard work was totally worth it in the end. I'm really proud of how this piece turned out and that it's going to be able to be enjoyed by employees and visitors at Google Chicago headquarters building for many, many years to come. This was such a great experience and I'd 100% love to work with Google again if they'd have me back. I said that I wanted to create a big transformation and I think I did it. It's so fun to see a client's face light up when you push your work even further than they had ever expected. And from the look on Matt's face, I'd say he was definitely pleasantly surprised. I'd like to send out a super special thanks to Google Chicago for making it a point to hire and compensate real living artists. This is what helps keep our creative communities working and thriving. Thank you. And as always, thank you guys for watching Cat Leap Art.